Hello, I am Julius. I am the creator of Above the Color of Law. And thank you for sharing your time with me. I focus on the mental and metaphysical thought processes relating to what we today call law. Today's episode is an introduction to a multi-part discussion called There Is No Spoon. And this episode is sponsored by Gold Care. Gold Care is a lifestyle consulting firm whose mission is to help you to create your life's perceptions, which leads you along the path to becoming your optimum self. So make the decision to embrace the power of exploring the possibilities to create the life that you want. Links are in the tab somewhere on the screen or in the description below. This is the introduction to <coughs> There Is No Spoon. Okay. I'm going to have to define here what this means. There Is No Spoon means that <coughs> what you're focusing on is not real. And it's an illusion. And since we tend to get what we focus on you must focus on something that's attainable that's tangible okay so for example i'm going to give you a couple of definitions this one is going to be about the united states of america the illusion is that the united states of america is a government in actuality the united states is a corporation it's a private corporation that operates in the public as a government now this whole thing is to get you to put yourself into a proper mind shift i've noticed that there are people who are trying to separate themselves and to come out however theoretically if you're not part of the contract then there's no remedy for you within the contract so basically what i'm saying is you're either in or you're out now this thing is about debtors and creditors so the redemption people are going to be very very familiar with uh these concepts however i just um Listen to a uh, video with by Gene Keating. It's a three-hour video. Basically, it's three one-hour segments. And I listened to him about three or four times. And he made a couple of points. And there was also a young man. I can't remember his name right offhand. He keeps saying, oh, but you guys are the experts. You guys are the experts. And I know he's a redemptionist. And I've got one of the redemption manuals also. And the manual basically wants to t t total separation. So what Gene Keaton said is you are a secure party, basically. Everybody is. The question is, are you a secure party creditor or are you a secure party debtor? I call them better debtors, superior debtors, or whatever. So I had a conversation um, with a man who was retired from New York. He was a lawyer, one of them high up guys. I don't remember his name. And he said, it's all about debtors and creditors. So I went and got a book. So what I do generally, and I want to know a subject, I'll go online and try to find me a book. This one here is called Debtors and Creditors. Is that what I said? Yeah, The Law of Debtors and Creditors. Okay, so when I open the pages of this book, I expected to find uh, the information on the creditors. What I really find is the system that they're talking about, these are other debtors acting like creditors because we don't know how to be the creditors ourselves. So let me explain this. The um, corporation called the United States, what they do is they extend credit in your name. That's why, well, 
extend credit in a name that looks like yours, okay? The community comes to know this as a straw man. So this is where the credit part comes. Now, you aren't taught anything about this part of the process. You only hear the debtor part of the process, okay? Um, you have to pay this, you have to pay this. And for everybody who's thinking that these guys are doing it wrong, think about this for a second. Maybe they're actually doing it right. Just, just, just think of that for a second. Now, I, I, I don't want to mention names, okay? But um, Yusuf L, High Frequency Radio, has interviewed Gene Keys. Now, you need to listen. If, if this is what you want to do, Listen to every word that falls off of the lips of both of those men. And what I've gleaned is, see, when you listen to Yusuf, um, he, he, I think the um, video was the Kabbalion. Um, he started with this, this, this thing called One Man Out. And it went through Cracking the Code up to the redemption process. Now, there are two books called Cracking the Code. One has like the Matrix theme in the back and the other has a blue uh, 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 uh you, you, you'll see the difference when you look at the books okay these are two different books two different authors okay so the the the, the use of text looks like because he, he tells you that he was locked up and he's gaining his freedom through this process so his process is to get out and to separate okay and he tells you that Gene Keating is his mentor. This is where he gets his stuff from, okay? Now, Gene Keating, when you listen to him, he's not trying to get out. What he's, try what, what he's doing is telling you how to integrate to fully take advantage. I don't want to use the word advantage. To fully utilize the system. See, you... Uh, creditor on one and understand this system was not made by you. This is not your system. They made this. This their system. Okay, and your role in it is really really minimal. Another thing um, that Gene said is all these people are trying to be secure party creditors, and he laughs and says they're more like secure party debtors. And what he's saying is, at least this is what I'm thinking he's saying. The, the system is set up for these guys in government to regulate these accounts. This is what they do. They regulate them. So if you know how to regulate them, you can be an asset. However, if you don't know how to regulate them, you probably need to let them do it. However, there is a place for you where you can claim your 1099s and do what Gene is telling you to do. Now... As a responsible person, you're going to take responsibility for everything, which means you're going to be able to offset debt. This is what everybody wants to do. They want to offset debt. And the process is a lot simpler than people think. The way I'm listening to Gene. Okay, the way I'm listening to Gene. So what's going to happen is, if you cannot discharge, okay, if you can't offset, the only thing you can do is pay with sweat equity. That's all you can do. As long as you're paying with sweat equity, you're a debtor. Plain and simple. The people coming after you for you to pay off with your sweat equity are also debtors. Because remember, the credit was extended in a name similar to yours, which makes you the creditor. Now, don't get too upset or buy in too negatively on this, simply because we've been taught by everybody how to be debtors. There's nobody, our parents. In fact, this is easy for me to keep up with because I'm a self-proclaimed Kabbalist, okay? And I can look at the tree, the 10 Sephiroth, the 10 spheres, and place what everybody is doing. And I can run the tree straight down to you. 
Okay, now, and Sephiroth number three, this is the legal, okay? These are the guys that we need to be very, very close to. So, what happens is, when you go in, if your mind is cluttered, if you can't think clear, you're going to be sheeple. It's just that simple. Because that's the presumption that you are. But so everything you do has to show that this presumption is void. So understand, I know this is a bit lengthy. When you hear me say, there is no spoon, it means that you're concentrating on something that's not real. So one more example before I continue. Okay. The phrase without prejudice, when you ask the average person, what was that? What does that mean? They're going to talk about blacks and whites. And if you ask somebody about a democracy and a republic, they're going to talk about Democrats and Republicans because these people simply don't know. Okay. And the words are set up to intentionally confuse you. The second one I said was so similar to the first one that people can't differentiate unless they know what they're talking about. So let's go back to without prejudice. What happens with without prejudice, it means I reserve all my rights. That's what it means. Now, the legal community, just like plumbers and, and, and tradesmen and uh, carpenters, masons, anybody who has a, 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 a work that they do, okay, they have their own language. Okay, they have their own language. And the legal community has their own language. It's, it's, it's sort of like you speak English, but you don't speak French. Or you don't speak uh, 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 Spanish, even though they're both Latin-based. So you, when you go into the court, you, 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 you may be able to know what Padre means. But when the guy says excommunicate, you're going to have to know what that means. Okay, so here's the way this works. When you say without prejudice or the judge signs paper, so on, so on, so without prejudice, it means you can come back. It means you have all your rights reserved. When he says with prejudice, he has actually closed the case. Now... Close it to the point where you can't come back. Well, in the normal sense of the terms, you can always do almost anything you want once you figure out what these guys are doing. Um, but understand, it's two separate languages. So when you're looking at uh, without prejudice, well, I'm not prejudiced to anybody. I like white people, black people. It doesn't matter what color they are. Okay, You're focusing on the wrong thing. And this is intentional. If he had said, well, all your rights are reserved, you would automatically know. Okay? So, there is no spoon simply means that you have to focus on the self, not on that external condition, which everybody wants to focus on. Okay? So, hopefully, everybody has a grasp of there is no spoon. See, when we free our minds, the rest will follow. I know we've heard that a couple of times. So in order to free the mind, we must uncode what is real. So the first thing we got to ask ourselves is, do we actually want to know the facts? Okay. There's a difference between a truth and a fact. So I might as well do this now. When you're um, a football fan and a touchdown is made, the touchdown is a fact. Well, is that good or is it bad? Well, the truth is it depends on who you are. Okay? So let's take the Redskins and the Cowboys. Hey, it's a good one, right? Classic rival, right? So when the Redskins make a touchdown, hey, that's good. But for the Cowboy fans, that's bad. That's the truth of the matter. However, if we switch it around and the Cowboys make a touchdown and the Redskins, it's good for the Cowboys and bad for the Redskins. However, the fact is there was a touchdown made. Okay, six points on the board, whatever way you want to look at it. Okay, that's the facts. So I'm going to be dealing with facts. Okay, truth is a relative term. Okay. So now, 
when we face these facts, we got to really want to know, do we really want to know the facts? And do we really want to be free? In order to be free, we have to realize that there is no spoon. Now, what I'm telling you now is incredibly easy when you totally accept the facts and totally align yourself with this fact, okay? The goal here is to sure up our secure and proper places in this system by attaining our proper personas within the corporation. I told you the United States is a private corporation operating in the public as a government, okay? Because everything that this boils down to is all about agency. Agency defines the role of all of us in a particular corporation, which again, we're talking the United States. In this case, it means defining whether we are creditors or whether we are debtors. So most of us know us about corporation, but and, and, and contracts. However, contract is only relative when you know agency, okay? What is your place in that contract? So whether we're creditors or debtors is defined by how we carry ourselves, not by what we call ourselves, okay? Um, people are putting in a lot of papers and this, that, and the other, and you have to follow through to dispel the myth. I'm, I'm, I should even call it a myth to dispel the presumption that you are a debtor. So whether we carry ourselves, well, okay, we're going to carry ourselves one way or the other. Now, when we figure this riddle out, how this is done, we will have arrived to the place that we want to be. So, again, I'm dealing with tactics instead of mindset because, I'm excuse me, I'm dealing with mindset instead of tactics. There we go. Let me correct that. Because, see, if your mind is solidly anchored, all of your tactics will work 100% of the time. Unless, of course, there are unethical or dishonorable things that are forged against you from the other side, meaning your opposition. And if this is the case, you will immediately, immediately, immediately know it. And, um, <laughs> okay, uh, this is a good thing. Uh, w w okay, mm. when people come against you, uh, okay, 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 I got to break this one. Mm. Okay, okay, okay. What's happening here is um Okay, you either going to be in the redemption process and that's where you're going to be setting or offsetting or discharging. It's going to be usually an um A for V acceptance for value or a um conditional acceptance for value. Now, when you do these ex these exceptions for values, oh man, there are certain forms which um, I'm still working on that you actually turn into the IRS and the IRS gets you your money. Okay, understand the IRS is my friend when you know what you're doing. Okay, what's happening is because we don't know what we're doing. The IRS is coming after us to pay a, um, a, 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 a tax that actually should be paid by someone else. Okay. That's, and that money should be coming to us. That's the skinny. Okay. So the, there are a lot of, okay. There are redemptionists who are fighting. Redemption has nothing to do with fighting. I'm going to make this point too that um, I'm just going to say it. I can't sugarcoat it. Your Bible, um, when you look at it in a, a spiritual text instead of, a, instead of a religious, instead of a religious sense, it opens up and everything that these guys are doing in commerce is actually biblically based when you can break the code. 
Okay, just follow me here. Okay, so if you are fighting, you're not doing redemption. So a lot of us have learned all these tactics and things and we're fighting. Here is the good point about knowing that. When you know what's supposed to happen, you know when they're lying and you know when your opposition is hiding things, okay? You only have to hide or lie when you have a weakness, okay? And as soon as you catch that lie, you don't actually have to say anything about what just happened. It will give you the where for all to maneuver and go around. So, all of your hard work in the past is still good, except now we can use that hard work to get us where we want to go. I hope that made sense to most people. Okay, so, we want to be anchored in doing it correct. So, now... If you're not anchored, you may win a few battles here and there, but it's going to be mostly luck. And sooner or later, that luck is going to run out on you. Okay. Um, I like to put it this way. When you um, come up against knowledgeable people um, that are being agreeable, they will more than likely yield. However, everybody don't know this. So don't start calling your IRS agents uh, on, 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 on that uh, IRS line and start telling them about things and they're supposed to be doing. These, these people don't know. And your tax presenters or uh, representatives, the people who are doing it, they, 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 they simply don't know. There are levels to this. And the level that these people are on is not just 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 don't just don't go with there, there's a reason why you send these papers to the cfos of companies because they're the only ones who really know what's going on in fact you barely know what's going on if you know what's going on at all so these people in these jobs um they got families too they gotta eat okay um just like you do give give these folks a break you know, don't go in there. See, it, I should have started with this part. I know why I couldn't start with that part. This thing, this, this whole thing has to do about love. It has to do about love. Um, There is a saying that the meek shall inherit the earth. Okay? what That, that, that don't mean that you're going to get contracts of land. What it means is um, you're so pleasant and presentable but nobody's afraid of you okay when you can get to that mindset you can actually talk to anybody so now i have to get to the warning the warning is to those people who may be new to these subjects and i'm if you haven't heard any of this before it is going to be new However, if you are in any of the redemption or protest uh, uh, arenas, it, it won't. It, 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 you, you, you're going to pick up pretty good. For those that are new, um, this presentation is presented in a daisy chain format. So basically, if you don't understand any of the current statements, you may need to slow down and even repeat those sections in question in order to get the full benefit of what I'm saying. Now, these are topics that you do not have to remember because once you get it, you don't have to think about it anymore. However, it would be good to be able to recall it in your own words in case somebody else asks you about the subject. Be warned. Everybody wants to know this stuff. And um, people are going to ask you as soon as you open your mouth about it. They're gonna, some are either going to be naysayers and some are going to be looking for answers. Here is what it all boils down to. 
there is a formula, okay? And this formula is not set in stone because it cannot be set in stone. Um, however, when you get the formula, it would be a lot easier to negotiate um, the system, as it were. So, the hard part, I guess, is over. So, let's begin. The whole goal of these presentations here and with myself is to be in compliance with the system at the level of a creditor by taking complete responsibility for my own life instead of leaving this responsibility to someone else that's viewed as a government. So therefore, there is no goal to fight or to beat the system. I will repeat. There is no goal to fight the system. There is no goal to beat the system. Because everything in the public is debt. And only the private can provide any credit. Okay. You, as the creditor, is a private entity. And this is how the public is operating. So... Being that you're going to either be seen as a creditor or a debtor, you must be able to show that you are a creditor by all of your actions. In order to avoid the presumption that you are a public debtor, a better debtor, a superior debtor, or at best a secure party debtor, better known as a surety. As a surety, right, correct. So... Let me let me tell you what a, 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 a better debtor is, a, a superior debtor. Uh, these are the guys with the eight hundred credit scores, and they got all the. These guys are the better debtors. Um, the lacking debtors are the ones that you know the um, the companies come after you, <coughs> trying to get money, which is usually, well, not usually, which is always going to be from your sweat equity. Okay, they're not asking you to uh, do an A for V. Now, the problem, not the problem, the, the, the focus of the A for V is this. Um, you don't know how to do it. And until you can do an A for V, because you can't, pro they produce credit in a name similar to yours, but you can't produce credit for yourself. However, you can neutralize it you can offset it you can do that so my goal is to secure my position as this secure party creditor in the corporation that is supposed to serve and support me this corporation is known as the united states of america this is why i'm telling you not fight don't fight okay know what you're doing there are a lot of people who know what they're doing well the ones at the top, I, this, I'm just going to keep going. So instead of being the surety, I want to be the creditor. Instead of that slash better debtor that pays the bills of the same said corporation through my equity by my way of voluntary taxes. Now, I'm going to have to get the tax document. It's an IRS publication. It's, it is. It's is our publications. Okay, I'm going to have to get it. Anyway, it shows you that your W-2s, I believe, are uh, two. Such an, hmm, Christ. Anyway, the type of money you get, money, another word I don't want to deal with right now, uh, should be report on the same type of form. And what we get is under uh, uh, two. And the form is a five. Anyway, you're filing the wrong form. And it, it, it's, it's right there in the tax publication. Okay, so, and this is another one of the illusions. When you call them, they're going to say, well, you need to file this and you need to file an extension. The forms don't say that. The forms don't, they don't say that. Okay, so now this is another one of the illusions. 
Okay. So when you realize that you're living in illusion, the question starts to shift. What does this illusion actually mean? So this is another warning I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to give you. When you start focusing on what everybody else is doing, that is also a spoon. You, you need to focus on what you're doing and figure it out for yourself. So I'm going to give you a point. Um, most tax professionals will tell you that everybody owes taxes. And it says something totally different than that. So when you have taxpayers, there is also a category of non-taxpayers just by general principle. Okay, yin and yang, no matter what principle you want to go. So if you go up to your tax professional and say, uh, do I owe taxes? They're going to say, yeah. And then you're going to say, why? Because of this, that, and the other. See, the first thing is, you need to know whether you are one of the owers or not before you even talk to that particular individual. See, so when you talk to an individual, you'll know either this person is blowing smoke up your rear or this person don't know. But that's your responsibility to find out which category you're actually in. If you're in a taxpayer category, pay them. If you're not in a tax category, we're going to have to talk about that because, see, your commercial transmitting utility, whether the government is right or wrong, cannot argue. That's why you do um, an offset. That's why you do an acceptance for value. See, so if the government comes up and says, well, you owe me $10 million, you just say, okay, I accept that for value. Or if there's something else you want, I accept. Well, if you don't give me $10 million, I'm throwing you in jail. Okay, well, I accept your offers for value under the condition that I don't go to jail. Accept it for value. That's all that is. Okay? <laughs> and when you listen to Keaton, you're going to realize how powerful that is. But you, you, you're you not going to learn that. I, I, I hate to, uh, I might as well stop and do this now. I'm trying to make this short, but it's it's not working. Okay. On the tree, there's 10 Sephiroths. And I'm going to go down and start with Sephiroth number three. The legal system is not going to tell you. Sephiroth number four, patriotism. Government's not going to tell you. All right. Five is religion, especially the orthodox ones. Okay. This is where your um, moral high ground comes from. It's not going to tell you. Six is the banking. Okay. They're not going to tell you because you're giving them your sweat equity as part of the, of the system, okay? Um, seven, the fact, the, the, the feeling part, it's, it's religious in nature, but um, I'm going to say the feel-good people. Um, they're not going to tell you because you feel bad. They want to make you feel bad about uh, uh, doing something different from them. The school system, even up to uh, the master's degrees, are not going to tell you, Okay. The next part is most important is uh, you need to stop watching television, listen to the radios and stuff like at least for like a, a, a month. Because these when you look at you ask any lawyer about a lawyer show, they're going to tell you that crap is wrong. Any lawyer worth his weight in dirt is going to tell you that's wrong. OK, the police shows this, that, that stuff is not right. But this is how they're programming you. Then you got your parents and everybody else telling you, you got to do this, you got to do that. They don't know any better. So this thing is total. It's, it's, it's totally, totally controlling. So be forewarned. All I'm offering you are the facts. Nothing more than that. Remember, the difference between the fact and the truth. Now, this is going to leave it up to you to decide what you're going to do with the rest of your life. So be warned again that if you want to remain in the dark, then you should leave now because you can't unlearn a fact as you can unlearn an illusion. The attempt here is for you to unlearn all of that stuff that has been forced down your throat. So if you're still here, I applaud you and I continue. The heart of what's real, again, lies in do we actually want to know the facts? And do we actually want to be free? 
a lot of people just don't want to know. And being free takes responsibility. And a lot of people just don't want to. You, you, from this point, you need to be honest with yourself if this is what you want to do. Okay, so as our inquiries become tangible, personal, and more urgent, one progresses from ignorance to enlightenment. Okay. Ignorance is when you don't know. Stupidity is, stupidity is when you know and don't do any better. It's no crime to be ignorant. Okay, so you're moving from ignorance to enlightenment. Now, I've been waiting to say this and I'm going to say it. My favorite presidential quote. Presidential quote. The President of the United States was George W. Bush. He said, Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, I won't get fooled again. Man had a point. See, the first time, you didn't know. Now, here's a position that we are in here, in, 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 in this country. Okay? We don't know that we don't know. Even if we knew that we didn't know, that would be something. And what I'm doing here is telling you that you don't know. This is your start. The start is knowing that you don't know. This is the process of moving from ignorance to enlightenment. See, what happens is you become the self with the potential to free oneself from the illusion. Okay, I'm going to go there. You know, all you church people, your mama can't go for you. Your daddy can't go. You got to go for yourself. Hell, you, 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 you remember all that? This thing is personal. It's personal. You got to do it for yourself. In plain English, you must free yourself. No one else can do it for you. See, before even I get finished, you're going to realize that all those things that you've been hearing in your Sunday go to meeting has a meaning that you don't have to wait until you die and see the Lord. It's for right now. You can use it right now. Um, This guy, gosh, what is his name? I can't remember him. He told me Bible means basic instruction before leaving earth. Holy is your life one hope. He was a holiness, by the way. Or is. I'm quite sure he's still. I, I, I don't see that man changing and jumping ship. I really don't. Um, I, really, I, really, I really love talking to this guy. And he made me think. Basic instructions before leaving earth. As a martial artist, we got basic instruction. We got intermediate instructions. We got advanced instructions. We got master's text. Everybody's talking about their own meat instead of milk. I'm telling you. You guys got so much milk, it's stupid. Now, I want to say this. I saw something on the internet about the story of Adam and Eve. All the elements were there, but the story was wrong. Okay. Here's what I'm going to tell you about, especially you, 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 you Bible based people. Okay. Get the story right. Okay. Study to show yourself approved. Get the story right. See, when you got the story right and the code comes in, it explains everything. However, if you got the story wrong, here's what's going here's what happens. You don't read it for yourself. You listen to some preacher. The preacher gives you a version of what the story says. So now if you get the codes, you may not be able to match it up. That's why you got to read it for yourself. Okay? I was going to stay away from that subject. However, it's what you know. And once you know that, the, 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 the takeoff is astronomical. Okay? 
So, there is a path for you to achieve this goal, and this path is called the philosopher's journey. This path will help you to realize your realization of what was said in the movie that there is no spoon. This is what I've been ranting about basically for this whole introduction and we must realize that there is no spoon in order to free our minds and uncode the illusion of what we call government or anything else that's presented to us as one thing when it's actually something else in fact most people don't even realize because you got to read this for yourself they, they they talk about Passover and the Passover lamb. But when you go back to the Old Testament, it was either a lamb or a goat. Okay. There's a reason why that's the way it is. I've divulged, I've went off course too much. So now let's go back again. There's an age old message that said the truth shall set you free. Okay. This message is the message of the inner self that frees us and teaches us which facts are truths. Okay? So now, I'm going to look at the steps to freeing the mind. There are going to be seven major phases of the philosophy's journey. One, dreaming. Summoning answers through the create, correct use of questions. I, I, I'll get into that when we get into phase one. However, that is how you get the subconscious mind to get you answers is to ask it the correct question. Everybody wants to command it and come it. Is questioning okay? Phase two is destruction of all limiting thought forms. I went through a little bit, which I probably shouldn't have at that particular time, of all the conglomerates of all the organizations that have molded your thought forms to make you what you are. A debtor is a slave, a debtor is a slave. You want to be the creditor or do you want to be the slave? Your choice. But actually, being a creditor is not for everybody. It's just it's simply not. Reconstruction. Okay? So once you've destroyed all these limited thought forms, you got to start anew. you got to reconstruct a fresh new mind. Okay? Phase four, when you construct this self through mind, this self, construct this fresh new mind, we're going to go with self-knowledge. Learning for oneself. Got to go for yourself. Instead of listening to what somebody said, they saw somebody do this, that, and the other thousands of years ago. Look, anything that could have been done a thousand years ago, two thousand years ago can be done now. Okay, in fact, that's why it was written so you can do it now. Not for you to believe somebody else did it. It's written so that you can do it. That's why you will do these things and greater. That's why it says that. It doesn't say, look at me 2,000 years ago. It's saying, do this now and more. That's what it's saying. Okay. Stop ranting. Phase five is doubt. Removing all doubts, fears, disbeliefs. Now, this is why you need to uh, get away from the TV and the news and all this stuff. Because at, 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 as you're going through this process, these systems are shooting uh, uh, things in you that's going to make you fearful. And I, I'm almost going to tell you this. Unless you're around like-minded people, you really don't want to even talk to them. Oh, that ain't going to work. You're going to get put in jail. So and so. People who do it right don't. Even if it, if, even if it don't work, 
the people who do it right don't go to jail. Now, if they're targeting you, that's something else. Now, that's one thing that, that, that this country will do. If there's somebody who's too knowledgeable or too influential, um, they may disappear or you take them out, you put them in jail or something, or you defame their name or something. So, okay, we, we, we're going to, that's a doubt thing. So we want to remove that by uh, getting rid of the stimulus, the news and things like that. Do it, it, it put it this way. You do this for 30 days. When you come off of that 30 day, you're going to be a new person. Now, what you do with it is going to be you. Belief. This is the big one for me. Belief is knowing the correct definition in relationship to knowledge and faith. This is just, this is the, mm. this is why they over there trying to find the shroud and this, these holy relics and this, that, and the other. Forget what's over there. Okay. And in Jerusalem and all that stuff. This stuff is for you right now. If, I mean, I guess it would be nice to do a pilgrimage and all that. Okay, fine. Um, but this is for you. And when you know these three differences, they're all closely related. Well, not close. Okay. They're all related and we'll show, I'm going to show how they're related. Now, the last one is the one I probably, it's the one I should have started with. And that's love. The most important of all the steps is love. And you want to be peaceable, even when people aren't being peaceable with you. This is the most important. In fact, this is the point that makes everything else run. Okay? They say God is love. However, in order to deal with that, I have to deal with that concept God. So right now, because this is supposed to be an introduction, that's going to have to be dealt with. Um, I'm going to put it this way. Instead of asking yourself who God is, you should ask yourself what God is. That's, and if you come up with some man in the sky looking down on you, then you, you you just you know just keep on to something better comes along okay so these are the seven steps of the philosophy's journey that will be used to neutralize the years of propaganda that has been forced upon us and that will be discussed in more detail in the next episodes so the seven phases uh maybe i do it in seven maybe i can do it in six or five um However, um, they have to be dealt with in detail. The main concept, again, though, is there is no spoon. There is no spoon. Do not become fixated on something that's not there. Do not go to that. You, you heard the story of the, the guy walking in the desert, and he sees a water hole, and there's a mirage. He goes there, and there's no water. That's that, that. There is no spoon. There is no spoon. Focus on what's real. Okay. So in order to keep up with my latest mental and metaphysical tips, hit that like button and that subscribe button. And do the same for our sponsors, which is Gold Care. For this episode, is sponsored by Gold Care. Cold Gold Care. Links are in the tab somewhere or on the screen or in the description below. And once again, thank you for sharing your time with me. You could have been anywhere doing anything. And I especially appreciate you being here with me now. Again, don't forget our sponsor, Gold Care. And thank you very much for spending this time with me.